started last year in May 2017. And each month we've gathered young startups like yourself, but also aspiring and current entrepreneurs of all ages here in this space to gather, to just be in this high energy, ambitious filled room, and also to have different resources from Futurepreneur to IEC Hamilton to Innovation Factory, talk about the resources and funding and mentorship that they can provide to you. And then we've had a number of incredible and inspiring keynote speakers like the gentleman we have here tonight we'll be talking to soon, talk about their journeys to inspire you. So tonight we have Dre here. I'm very excited to have this conversation. And for the first time ever, this event is going to be filmed, not live, so don't worry about how you look and everything, but it will be published later as both a video and a podcast on our website, generationzhamilton.com, and our YouTube channel, which is also Generation Z Hamilton. And we're very thankful to have you here, and thank you to Clay and Leon for coming here and just being a part of this. I'm really grateful for you two to be here this evening. I like the dance, thank you. <laughs> I like the high energy. And yes, I also, one last thing, I want to encourage you all, if you want to take any photos during the time that we're talking here, and if you want to take any photos while we're networking, if you want to take a selfie, do whatever you want, and post it on social media with the hashtag Gen Z Hamilton, that would be really great, because it'd be good to get it out on social media and also to look back at beautiful photos of us in the past. All right, so enjoy the evening. We're going to get started here right now. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> All right, so thank you, Dre, for coming tonight. So I just want to first off give off a little biography of him so you know who he is and why he's here. So Dre is a songwriter and recording artist from Hamilton. Before music, Dre studied political science and graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree from McMaster University. Dre's debut single, Without Ya, was released on June 3, 2017. Upon its release, the Latin-inspired single was named Maple Pick Song of the Week by 91.5 FM The Beat, featured as the Top 40 Sure Hot by 103.7 Cool FM, and added to the Northern Spotlight by 103.7 Mix FM. Dre was named the People's Choice Award winner of the 2015 Juno Songwriting Competition as a co-writer of the single Turn It On. The artist was also the only songwriter to receive the Business Link Niagara Top 40 Under 40 Award in 2016. As a performer, he most notably opened the, for the Grammy-nominated artist B.O.B. in Toronto for the launch of his 2015 Canadian tour. And Dre is also known for his podcast, Real Talk with Dre Payo, which has featured conversations with artists such as the Arkells, Monster Truck, Billy Talent, Sean Frank, and more. And Dre's vlog, Real Talk TV, showcases another side of his personality, chatting with various influential figures outside of music, ranging from professional hockey players to political leaders. So he is a man that does it all, and we're going to be talking about how he does it all and how he manages to stay so grounded. So thank you so much for coming today. I'm really excited to have you. How are you? Very good. Doing well? Yeah. Good, good. I'm happy to hear that. So I kind of just want to start off this conversation right now talking about how you first started with studying political science. And political science, of course, is a very different industry from being in the music career. So what inspired you to make that change from political science to pursuing a career in music? And you can keep the microphone for now. I think more than anything, it was just the fact that I was really unhappy. And I wanted to be happy. So um, I always had a passion for music and for writing. And political science had a, a big writing aspect to it. It really helped me build my vocabulary and just be um, up to date with current events. And when I sat down with myself and said, what am I actually going to do for the rest of my life? Um, all I can think about is making music, and I was like, I'm super young. If, if I'm gonna take a risk, it's gonna be now. So I just kind of just decided to go all in on it, and some people probably think that was not a good idea. Some people thought it was a great idea, but I just kind of went for it and hoped for the best. And did you have a lot of fears in that moment? Because I think 
a lot of times you're always thinking about what are other people going to think of me after making this decision to go into a career of political science, which could be very secure and stable, to a music career? What were the reactions of people? Did you receive a lot of backlash or support? Well, I mean, I come from like a pretty conservative European family who really pushed for you to be a teacher or for you to be a lawyer or a doctor sort of thing. So when I said I was going to go into music, especially without going to school for music, for them it was like kind of suicidal and they were like, what are you doing? Oh, it's a phase, it's gonna pass. And like, yeah, I had fears. I mean, realistically, we have a lot of fears. I mean, I, I had fears today about some business decisions I was making, but it's, it's giving into those fears that's something I think is something I've gotten strong at and not giving into those fears and just kind of really focusing on what I want and being crazy enough that I could do it. So I just kept that pumped in my brain and followed that sort of voice instead of giving into the maybe you'll fail sort of thing. And that's really good because I think a lot of us do give into that voice of they're going to fail, I'm going to fail, what am I going to do if I do fail, right? So that's really good that you didn't. So take us from the very beginning when you started your music career and bring us up to date now. What was the beginning process like? You were discovered by Universal Music when you were singing on a beach in Spain? Yeah, I, I think that meeting Shuso was a big thing. I met an artist who started off as a YouTube star and then he signed with Universal and he kind of showed me around the world of songwriting and eventually is what led to me you know, pursuing the recording artist's life. And I think that was what really made me believe it was possible because Shuso was just a regular dude and he wasn't some magician sort of thing and he just kind of said, yeah, just just keep going with it. And he was the same where he, he didn't read music. He Half the chords he was playing on the guitar, he really didn't know the names of them. But he was good at making music and that's all that really mattered. And he was saying the same things to me, like, hey, you remind me of myself. Um, why don't you look into maybe taking this seriously? And that was kind of the first time that I had I feel like everybody has that one person that gives them that extra like light or belief, whoever it is. And he was definitely that person for me that made me just go ahead and take that extra step and pursue it full time. And what was that experience like working with such a high end professional from Universal Music? Did you ever expect to work with someone like him at the very beginning? I think it just felt so natural and it just felt like something that I should be doing and I never really felt nervous i just kind of felt like i was with a friend messing around sort of thing and it, it just felt like something i really wanted to do so i, I just kind of chased that whole thing because i always i always try and tell myself that life goes you know up and down in waves and when stuff gets really exciting i try not to go too crazy and when stuff goes down i try not to get too crazy i try to like stay in the middle um i was always bad at opening christmas presents <laughs> with my parents and they're like, why aren't you excited? So for that, it wasn't as great, but um, for my career, it's something that I found really helped me just kind of stay in that, that middle course. That's good. And then where did that lead you from then? After meeting the professional from Universal Music, where did that lead you after that in your career, in your music career? Well, she also kind of helped me understand the power of social media and the power of YouTube. That's the way he really built his brand. So I kind of followed in the way he did things on social media and really focused on building an audience uh, through doing covers. And for a bunch of years, I was just covering songs in Spanish because I was inspired by a lot of his music. Um, half the time, not really understanding what I was singing, but just really enjoying the Spanish music and that sort of vibe. And it was funny that he was doing English music and I was doing Spanish music and neither of us kind of really fully understood what we were singing, but it just kind of worked. And from there, it eventually evolved into writing my own songs. And for a while it was like, oh, I'm never gonna be an artist. I'm just gonna be behind the scenes and I just wanna write. And then I'm 25 and I was like, oh, like I feel like I'm getting old. And like, if I'm gonna actually try this, like I should try it now while I'm 25. So I just released my first single, which was last year. Yeah, And that's what I wanna talk about now. So that then led to his first single, which was June 3rd, 2017, literally just celebrating the yeah, one year anniversary one year, now, right? Yeah. And I want to take a moment to read this because you really experienced a lot of success for your first single, in my opinion. I think it's just incredible. 
So the first single, Without Ya, it got over 1.5 million views on Facebook and over 230k on YouTube. And it also harnessed a lot of radio play all across Canada. So my question for you is, how did it feel to experience so much success with your very first single? Did you, did you even expect that? I definitely didn't expect it. Yeah. Again, I tried to stay like the level-headed. Yeah. Try to stay humble. Of course, <laughs> but um, more than anything, I think it was from from looking back at it now, it's so easy to be like, oh, like you just released a song and that was amazing. All of a sudden, people liked it because it was the song sort of thing. And I like to think the song is good, but there's so much preparation to all of that. I mean, I think a big part was also the fact that. I, I spent a lot of years in media and, and, and writing for different platforms as a writer and working behind the scenes as a songwriter and kind of making those connections. And I think too many artists think that they release a song and then everybody cares about it sort of thing. And I wish that was the case. And I wish it was just about the music because that's what I want to do is just make music and just sit in a studio all day. But that's not the case. So I really focused on you know, building my connections and understanding how, how to sell things and how to sell music and understanding social media especially. And that's what I want to talk about today is the social media aspects of things and digital marketing. What was the biggest lesson you learned when it came to getting the name, your name out there and getting the word about yourself out there on social media? What was the biggest lesson you learned with that? I think the biggest thing for social media is so many people make it about themselves. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to make this like shrine to themselves and make it about how cool and awesome their life is. And I think at the end of the day, it's about making the viewers see themselves in the content and feel something from the content. That's interesting. Um, yeah. A lot of the people we, we work with with the digital marketing company that I help run, they come in thinking like, oh, we're going to make this awesome promo video and we're going to do a photo shoot. And, and for some people, that's great. But what, what I find really moves the needle is helping people feel things and telling a story more than anything. Yeah. And I think for me, I don't know if for all of you too, that's actually an eye-opener because a lot of times when you think of your social media, it's your name, it's your brand. So you think it's about me. But at the end of the day, whether you're starting a company, you're running your business, you're trying to build clientele, whatever it is, you're building your brand, it's about the people. And it's about making connections and it's about having people relate to your product or relate and find themselves in your services. So... How would you say we can do that when it comes to using our social media? What different tips could you give to entrepreneurs here? I think with social media, the, the thing is, is that people can smell bullshit from so far away. <laughs> um, this is true. <laughs> so if you're really bad at being in front of a camera, um, I'm not saying like, hey, don't do social media, but think of the best ways. Like, don't feel like you have to be on Instagram because everybody's on Instagram. Mm -hmm. If you're a great writer, there's no, there's nothing wrong with going on Medium and, and doing a bunch of, of writing and blog posts or coming up with your own website. It's about knowing your strengths and really not faking it and thinking that you everybody has to do selfies with Ferraris and that sort of stuff on all the social media. I think just keeping it, know what you're good at sort of thing and post about that. And what are the things that worked well for you when it came to getting your name out there? It may not have been social media. Maybe it was going to actual events and being present there. What worked for you with building your brand? Um, collaboration was huge. Um, working with different artists who were on the same path as me, sharing audiences, doing something as small as getting together for 20 minutes and doing selfie videos and giving each other shout outs. Stuff like that, I mean, we underestimate how often, at least the generation that I'm looking to target, millennials, is every night I know a lot of millennials are looking at their cell phone and before they go to bed they're checking their Instagram stories. So just capitalizing on where the eyes are, um, doing things like collaboration with that. And then with in person, so many people would tell me like, you need to get out to the bars and do the bars. And I really enjoy doing schools and elementary schools and, and talks and small performances that are intimate because you connect with the people. It's the most real and people just feel you a lot better yeah. than when there's really loud music and everyone's drinking. And, and alcohol's that sort of involved. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that just doesn't work for me. So yeah. um, intimate, small, being able to converse with as many people as possible was the best way that I could actually make relationships that stuck in that. Yeah. And for aspiring or current entrepreneurs here in our, our audience or musicians, whoever it would be, 
When it comes to digital marketing, what are the things we should avoid? What should we not do when it comes to building our platform online? Kind of like the don'ts. We talked about the do's. What are the don'ts now? It's, it's interesting because I feel like the scary thing is, is there's so many digital marketing agencies. I mean, just being in the industry, there's so many companies that tell you they know exactly what they're doing. And if somebody tells you they know exactly how to make you viral or that one video is going to do it or that they have like the key to all, it's, it's a lie. There, a lot of the digital marketing companies that I've seen are just robbing people, to be completely honest. Don't underestimate how much power you have as an individual. And then it's nice that sometimes it feels like, hey, if I just, if I put a couple hundred bucks here, everyone's going to do it for me and everything's going to go great. I think the biggest don't is just don't give away all your money thinking that people have the keys to the, the city sort of thing. And that's why, I mean, a lot of people I've worked with in digital marketing see some of the stuff I've done and I've said like, just so you know, it doesn't mean that every video I do is really successful and everything that you do just because we follow the same step-by-step -step process, it's also timing and it's also knowing your audience. We all, every, every person in this room has a different target demographic and different audience who care about different things. I think self-awareness is the answer to like a lot of the questions you've asked. So I, the amount of time I've spent like trying to focus on myself and recognizing that I know a lot about myself, but I also have like a ton of stuff to learn and I really, at the end of the day, don't know anything. So it's like that balance of knowing that you believe in yourself, but still trying to figure it out. Yeah, exactly. And you're right. It is all about believing in yourself. And clearly you do believe in yourself because as I mentioned at the beginning, he is a man who does it all. You have your vlog, you have your podcast, you're a songwriter, you're also a part of, if I'm not mistaken, it was the city of Hamilton's music, the yeah. industry there with helping music entrepreneurs to build their platform and to get connected as well. And then you also work with a digital marketing agency as well. Yes. So how do you keep yourself grounded? How do you keep yourself sane? That's what... See, I was, we were talking about this question yeah. earlier, and it's like... Today was the honest, perfect day, you were today saying, was too. Today like was a perfect day, because so much craziness happened today, and I was like, oh my god, this is like, <laughs> this is the end of the world right now. And then you snap back into it, and you're like, okay, everything's going to be fine. But yeah. I think the, real, the realest answer I can give you is sometimes I'm not grounded. Sometimes it's complete chaos, and I have to figure out how to not go insane. And I think that that's the realest answer. I think every entrepreneur has been at that point where they're like, what is happening? What am I doing with my life? Should I just completely stop? Is this like a waste of time? Do I, is, is this a fraud sort of thing? Like, am I supposed to be here sort of thing? And you question everything. I, I, I do that a lot still sort of thing, but I just, I have great friends. I think that's a big thing. I meditate. Um, as much as I can. And every artist that I have ever worked with says they meditate or do yoga. Mm -hmm. So there must be a thing there. I'm not a huge yoga person. but It I must know work, eh? Who, yeah, it must work. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, just doing whatever. Again, knowing yourself. Don't feel like you have to do that. If you need to go to the gym and pump some iron and that works for you, then do that. Yeah, that's good. And I, I completely agree with you. We all have our ways in which helps us to stay grounded and helps us to feel balanced. And what do you think is the key to staying balanced as an entrepreneur? Because as entrepreneurs, I think we all can agree here, there's so many things we could be doing, right? Especially when you're starting out your company, you have to talk with new clients, you have to network to put your name out there, you have to go to different things to be able to actually organize your business and get it registered and build the website, all of that sort of stuff. How do we stay balanced at the beginning when we feel as if we're running around with our head cut off because we need to be in a million places at once? All I can really give you is my experience. I don't know if this is like- And that's what I want, your everything. experience, yeah. But I think it's just knowing what you want and where you want to go and taking the time to know that instead of doing busy work. Sometimes we're like, if I just keep doing random things, even if it's completely unrelated, I don't know, I found it just made me more stressed when I calmed myself and focused on what do I actually want? Why am I doing music? Why am I doing all of this? Is it worth it? When you answer those questions, things just got super, a lot more easier, at least for me. So I think calming all the chaos and 
the distractions of people telling you, you need to do this. This is the music you should make. This is what you should put on Instagram. This is what you should put on Facebook. I think it's whatever you want at the end of the day. It's, there's no one answer. Yeah. And now I want to take it back to how we're celebrating one year now for yeah. you. Not we are. You're celebrating we, one yeah. year. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> So you released your single last year, and then you actually have a new single that you're releasing this coming month. June 22nd. Yeah, June 22nd. Do you want to give us some details about that? What can we expect? Yeah. Um, the, the song is, I've been surrounded by um, a lot of digital media, a lot of social media, and I think it's a big thing and significantly affects the way we have relationships, whether it's intimate relationships or friendships. So the single is a lot about that, uh, about my experiences and the the distractions we have from social media and, and the way they affect the relationships. And it's a dance, poppy, fun song because it's summer and I wanted something that you can roll your windows down and enjoy the sun, but it has definitely some meaning to it about just communication. Was there a particular moment or experience that inspired you to want to write that? So I wrote the song like over a year ago. Okay. I write like a bunch of songs yeah. and then when I'm like, it's time to, I should record a single, yeah. I listen back to it. I think it's just, it's a buildup of moments and I think as the song evolves, I always find like, oh, I think I was actually talking about this and songs, even songs I haven't written over time, some of my favorite songs have different and new meaning to it. So at the end of the day, I try not to explain the songs too much because I really hope that when you listen to it, you're like, oh, this reminds me of like that time, like. Timmy did this and like I was on social media and it really connects to me so okay I see and with the new single of course there's always lessons we learn so you released your other your first single last year this time and then now you're on to your second one was there a particular big lesson that you learned with releasing your first one that you made sure you kept in mind with writing your second one and releasing that one things happen really fast yes that's for and sure if you're not prepared you don't know what you don't know how, when opportunities are going to come and when you're going to have to capitalize so I just in my head I'm a lot more prepared for this song and just recognized how important it is to take even those extra steps I was I thought I was prepared at the time of the first single but when things started happening quickly I wish I was a little bit more prepared with you know speaking engagements and organizing my social so I'm always just trying to improve the way I'm executing on, on marketing the song and that's the same thing when it relating to from music, the music entrepreneurial side to running a business, things happen fast, don't they? Right? Things just, the ball gets rolling once you get in a particular idea, whatever it may be. So how do we just make sure we're organized when it comes to that then? How did you stay organized when things were going so fast? Well, with the business stuff, because I'm doing, we're running the digital media company and then also putting out the music, I use something called Basecamp. It's What's just something. Camp? It's just it's um, it's basically an app that helps you organize everything, similar to like a a, a Google where you can have a Google Docs okay. and you can put all you can communicate with your team and you can, everyone can see the docs and just something basically an agenda. When I was in like university, I sucked at all of that and keeping an agenda and I would just kind of go with the flow sort of thing. And it was actually music who taught me you really need to be organized. So we use something called Basecamp that really helps us. It's really good. And I just want to close off the conversation here with what advice you would give to other entrepreneurs here, whether you're starting out with your company or you've been building your business for several years. What advice would you give to these entrepreneurs as a music entrepreneur and helping other music entrepreneurs? I think the best advice I could say is know yourself, know what you want, and don't listen to people who say that they know everything or that they have the keys to the city sort of thing. Take the time, don't feel like you're in a rush. 25 is young, 40 is young, there's no rush. I see people who are having massive success and they started late and I see people who are also 19 and they're doing super well. Not nitpicking at the small things and just taking baby steps one day at a time. Even though we have a million tasks, like in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, we have all this stuff to do. As long as I'm doing it one thing at a time, things have gone well. Um, I, I'd say that's, that's the best thing to tell me. That's good. Is there any final things you wanted to talk about before we go off to our question and answer? 
No, I just, I want to thank you for having me and for organizing these events because I remember the first event. Yep. And I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. You need to keep doing this. So I'm happy that you've kept going with it. And there's significantly more people every time that we come. So I'm, I'm really excited for you. I'm happy to be here. Well, thank you so much, Dre. I'm really glad that you were able to come here and just talk about your experience, your journey. And I really do wish you all the best, especially with your new single coming out. I thanks. can't wait to hear it. Thanks. And thanks to everyone for coming out. I just want to open it up to our audience here. If you have any questions for Dre, whether it's relating to his personal journey with music or entrepreneurship, because he is a music entrepreneur, and actually you mentor quite a few younger, oh, sorry, younger startups, so I think it might just be that. Okay. Yeah, so if you have any questions, ask. <laughs> I'll give you some Good time to answer everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, did you use any paid ads or boost your posts for the the viral video? Absolutely. I think that we are one of the luckiest generations that we can reach such a large amount of people with such a little amount of dollars. And I think the fact that once the bigger brands start recognizing that this is when there's a commercial on TV, we actually pick up our phones. I think the price of ads is going to go straight up. So I think one of the best investments I've ever made is putting money into social media ads. Mm -hmm. So did you use that for that one viral video, the single that you made, where you boosted Of course, that of yeah. course. And, and again, a big thing for organic reach is Facebook's changed their algorithm and they favored local media. Mm -hmm. And they're giving a lot of organic reach to local media. So the more that you can get local media sharing your stuff, the more organic reach you can do. And then of course, ads is an important mm -hmm. thing of, of your marketing plan, I think. Mm -hmm. Nicole, you can go first, and then. Um, I was going to ask you, obviously, being in the public eye, um, how do you deal with like, people's opinions, criticism, input, anything like that? Is it? I don't think of it like that. I don't think of my someone of myself as someone who's in the public eye. I just kind of do myself, and I don't know. At the same time, I feel like regardless, I'm just trying to be a good person and trying to do myself and just be as honest as I can be. It definitely like, it, I can't say like, oh, it doesn't bother me at all. Especially like in my early videos when I was singing like in Spanish and obviously there's people who are Spanish who are like, this guy is not Spanish, especially the early ones that I look back at now. And there's a bunch of stuff saying like horrible things. Like, like people would definitely feel comfortable to say like, you suck and go die sort of thing. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, at the end of the day, I leave all my negative comments. Like if you go to my old YouTube videos, I leave them there. Because when I, and I don't know if this day will ever come, but um, if I finally feel like, hey, I'm super successful. And I say that because I don't ever think of myself as successful. I kind of always am trying to chase a certain level of certain bar that always keeps getting higher, I feel. But one day I'll probably go back and comment back to those negative comments and be like, what now? Sort of thing, you know? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't try and focus on the negativity too much. If I can jump on that too. There is kind of a beauty to people doing that. Just the way that social media works is that person had to watch the video and then go through and comment on it, which just drove up your visibility, right? Like, yeah, oh, that's true. Right. They're boosting the organic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the comment is actually worth more than a like. Right? Yeah. So they, yeah. they actually helped you more by, like, you're the worst, you suck. It's like, you just got me 10 more views, bro. Like, that's, that's fantastic. Sometimes I'll put hearts yeah. or something like that. Because hopefully they comment again, and then yeah. it's just more. All my stuff's going to be driven towards them, because Facebook would be like, oh, they love this guy. That's, that's <laughs> Hated. The reason it blew up is because so many people commented on it. Yeah. yeah. I think there was a question right there. Yeah. Yeah, I just had a question about how 
how you monetize your following on social media? Is if there's certain so, strategies um, to differentiate the people who like consuming your content for free and then the people who will pay it? So you're talking about like if I'm doing any like paid branding sort of thing? I guess like for your business it would probably be like ticket sales if you have like a concert or like selling music. Like, how do you monetize your audience? How do they give you money? Well, again, I think the beauty of <laughs> if you're making music, I always say if you are the songwriter, that's the best way to make money from your music, to get music royalty. Like th when the song is playing on the radio, if you're seeing the song, you do get a portion of the royalty. They have a performance royalty, but the person who makes the most money from the song on the radio is the songwriter. Um, so I, I, if you can write music, I definitely advise artists to write and own the master and the publishing of the song and that's the best way to make the most money from the music. I also am a firm believer in doing paid advertisements in terms of like gear or if there's certain brands you you do actually believe in. I'm cool with that if there, if, if there are people who are willing to do that. Um, if that matches you, I would, I would do that. But again, I, I also found it important, especially early on, working in different realms that relate to music was the best way that I was able to get some funding and, and be able to pay for the music and be able to do it full time. So doing stuff like working in the media and working in, in digital marketing really helped me to be able to produce my, my music. I'm curious about how, um, like why you're on social media, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, like how do you, how do you change these numbers, these likes, this engagement? Like, how is that beneficial to your business? Because I feel like people invest in things that they connect to. I think social media is just where the attention is right now. Before it was TV, and before that it was radio, and I think social media is just where the most attention is right now. That's why I'm there. And if it, if and when it changes, I'm sure with more VR and all that sort of stuff starts going up, the attention is going to be more there. Um, I think that's the main reason why you need to be on social media. And in order to build your following things like looking up hashtags that relate to the kind of music or whatever your business is building relationships with these people commenting on their stuff liking their stuff sending them dms treating it like real life so many people that like follow me now for the longest time they didn't follow me because like oh there's probably a bot like liking my stuff and commenting but it was actually me spending a lot of hours building relationships and then they're like oh they used my name he's asking me like two sentences is this real it's a full-time job. I think like it's like working out social media for if your business is full-time and it's in a realm that you feel matches social media. I'm taking like multiple hours a day and taking the time to go and comment and like and build relationships. And it's because again, I think that you can build attention and people will invest in your music that way. I hope that answers the question. I didn't ramble. Yeah. <laughs> So a week before my first single was released, I went through a breakup and all that was happening all at once. And I think it's just separate and it's it's often tough to do, but just separating your work from, from your from your personal life, I think it's an important thing. The same way I, I really make it a habit of when I go home to my family, I I don't talk about work and I try and just focus on family time. I really try and separate it for the other people because at the end of the day, like Nobody wants to hear that I'm really sad and I don't feel like talking today. You know what I mean? You can't imagine you went into your job and your boss is like, oh, well, you have this document to finish. You're like, I'm sad and I don't want to do it. <laughs> Honestly, I believe in a world that would be awesome if you could do that. And it just, I don't think that it's like that these days. So I just kind of go with what's working and try and just get through it sort of thing. Any other questions? <laughs> I keep seeing you raise your hand and I'm not sure. Oh, I'm joking. <laughs> <I'm trying. laughs> no, seriously. You too now? No. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Yeah. Any I, I have other a question. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm a lawyer. Um, I know you're a musician and you use social media. I wanted to be a lawyer before. That's what I was going to be. Well, you want the, you want the better route. <laughs> you like this part better than mine. I'm sure it is better than mine. <clears throat> so my question is: is for someone in a more traditional industry, I'm on social media. I, well, personally and my 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 business as well. Um, how do you think you can really utilize that um, in a traditional industry model, such as a law firm or an accounting firm and, and that sort of stuff, right? Because I'm not, I'm not out there performing, basically, right? Um, you're saying how would I execute yeah, social yeah, media yeah, if I was a lawyer? Yeah, well, you're, you're a digital marketing expert, so how would you... Expert is, is not the right word, right? Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> how would you utilize it for, for a law firm, basically, right? I think the, the... I mean, we work with everything from architects to plumbers to artists with the digital media agency. And the, the best advice we give people is documenting instead of trying to make up some sort of elaborate amazing water cannon video sort of thing. I think there's a lot, there's definitely an audience for people who are interested in law. There's students who are pursuing it. There's young people who, who look at judges and, and lawyers on TV who want to pursue it. There's people who are actually in the industry. Documenting some of the different struggles that you have. I would have a, a walk and talk interview style thing that I would do with you. Cutaways to B-roll of different things you're discussing and getting to know you as a person as opposed to like just strictly law stuff okay. relating your personal life and how you apply it to the law because that's going to connect to people not just going through like Canadian law here's this here's that um, going having breakfast with you and having a conversation with another lawyer and what you guys talk about oh they don't just talk about law 24 7 they mix in like I like blueberries too and some of these tiny things, the amount of people were like, oh my God, I love bubble tea too. And I was like, of all the stuff I've done, you remember that I like bubble tea? And I think it's those things that actually build an audience. And I'm serious. So that makes sense. Personalize and then use the personalization to try to connect, right? That goes back to your message of trying to connect. Absolutely. With the audience, right? Yeah. yeah. Not forgetting that it's about the personal, not just the, the industry you're in. Yeah, cool. Thank you. That was a good question. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, that's perfectly fine. But if there's any other questions, I just want to say we'll take one more. No? All right. Well, then, I guess we'll close off. Thank you so much, Dre. Thank you so much for the questions. appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, everyone. I'll take the microphone now. Yeah, so thank you, everyone, for your time to come out to this event tonight. We are going to actually close it off. We have about 20 more minutes until the end of the event at 9 p.m. So if you want to take the time to network with someone, maybe you had a conversation before that just got started and you want to finish it off, or if there's someone you haven't met yet and you'd like to have a conversation with them, I encourage you to do that. Or if you'd like to come and talk to Dre, he's right here. So we'd love to hear any or more questions you have. But thank you so much for coming out tonight. I hope you all enjoyed it, you found it helpful, you learned something, it was inspiring, and as I always like to say at the end, the networking events do happen on a monthly basis, so the next event will be Wednesday, July 18th from 7 to 9 p.m. here at Commotion on King. We will, of course, be all over social media as you always see us with our seven-day countdown, so you'll have to find us there, but thank you again for coming, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your night.